Could you just uh, tell me your full name and your ability? Here? Sure. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Friel. I'm from Gross Hill, Michigan. Uh, I'm the future operations officer for 5th Marine Regiment. All right. And could you again explain the importance of uh, command and control training for 5th Marines and basically our future operations? Absolutely. Command and control training uh, for combined arms operations is vastly different from uh, command and control operations in stability operations. As you know, we've been involved in stability operations for the last 10 years in Iraq and Afghanistan. Those, those types of command and control operations for stability ops are uh, focused on the populace, focused on key leaders, focused on you know, the factors that drive the populace, factors that are really more uh, you know, focused on having the populace defeat the insurgency. Um, command and control of combined arms live fire operations, which is what we're doing here, is, is, a, is a bit more linear. It's a, it's a bit more focused on command and control of elements that are going to employ indirect fires, direct fires, air delivered fires uh, against enemy in fixed positions. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a little more uh, focused on kinetic activity, whereas during stability operations, command and control is more focused on uh, you know, the non-kinetic fight. So we're out here, what we've realized over the last 10 years, certain skills have eroded. They've, uh, they, they just need to be brushed up a little bit. So we're out here at Desert Scimitar uh, in, a, in a combined arms live fire exercise, and, and we're employing all the techniques, the tactics, techniques, procedures of live fire combined arms. All right, sir. And, you know, like you said, as we move away from point operations, counterinsurgency operations, why will exercises like Desert Scimitar be more important to us as a, you know, as a, as a ground combat element and also as an air, air ground task force? Well, we always, we'll always acknowledge that I think in the future we're going to be involved in, in counterinsurgency operations in the future. I think the enemies of, uh, of the free world have now realized that an insurgency is a natural migration for, uh, you know, a, uh, an enemy force that's opposing a, you know, a formidable, f formidable force, a first-rate country like, like the United States military. Uh, so they're naturally going to migrate towards a counterinsurgency. Uh, but there are, are still portions of the world where we're going to be, we're going to have to establish a, a foothold uh, before we can uh, access the population, so to speak. To obtain that foothold, we're going to have to employ indirect fires, direct fires, uh, integrate air support, uh, integrate engineer operations to gain that foothold in that country uh, to root out the, uh, you know, the, 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 the bad elements uh, so we can actually interact with the populace and ultimately get the populace to, uh, to take the fight to the enemy for us. And can you just explain a little bit like the difference between how we've trained in the past for counterinsurgency operation versus, like you said, the linear fight that we're trying to train for with uh, Desert Scimitars? Sure thing. Uh, obviously, in a counterinsurgency stability operations, we'd come out to the desert and uh, out here at Twin Palms, they have an incredible, incredible uh, setup with, with role players, uh, local, local uh, Southern Californians actually uh, from, from, the, from their host country that actually come out and uh, they actually establish roles w w that uh, leadership roles that kind of imitate or m mimic what you know we, the roles you would find in the populace in, in countries such as Iraq or Afghanistan. So thousands of these role players uh, that uh, we interact with out here for stability operations training. Um, obviously, when you're conducting that type of training, you're focused on interacting with the populace, uh, learning about the populace, and, and actually. Uh, Doing collections and intelligence uh, with, on, on the populace, so you can so you can ultimately find out what makes the populace tick. Um, it's not all that kinetic. It's what they call non-kinetic activity. Um, combined arms live fire, where we're uh, against a, a fixed enemy that's out in the open, or maybe even you know in a uh, in in, a, in a, a fixed a fixed position. You have to be able to actually close with. You know, locate, close with, and destroy the enemy uh, by fire and maneuver. Uh, it's not really population-centered. It's it's more uh, uh, it's it's more linear. So, and uh, just last question, sir, kind of a curveball for you. With the well, first of all, can you tell us which units you guys uh, have under you, and then uh, what kind of challenges have you seen? You know, since this hasn't happened in basically 10, 12 years. What kind of challenges have you guys seen as far as controlling those units or any command and control issues? That's, that's a great question, Sergeant Lopez. Uh, Fifth Marine Regiment, uh, as we've come out here to Desert Scimitar, we've integrated our, our attachments. Um, we have our air support liaison team. 
which we typically we, uh, we employ in country even in stability operations but typically under different circumstances fixed routing of aircraft fixed uh, you know routes for helicopters for fixed wing uh, so it's not all that dynamic uh, in this combined arms live fire exercise it's more dynamic the air support liaison team who works with the regimental air officer is required to actually uh, you know, they have to deconflict gun target lines from aircraft, um, and it's a you know it's it's a bit more challenging. So we've integrated them, our our engineer planners. We we integrate our engineer planners in a stability operation. However, out here in Desert Scimitar Combined Arms Live Fire Training, we integrate our engineer planners uh, to to basically put in obstacles, uh, uh, to formulate an obstacle plan, link it in, and, and actually synchronize it with indirect fire and direct fire. We take uh, company level live fire uh, plans and weave them on top of obstacle plans for defenses. We also employ the engineers in a um, uh, breaching operations. And uh, it's pretty much it. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the importance of Desert Servitar or Command and Control, sir? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we came off a steel night in, in 2012, in November, December 2012, and we realized we really we needed to brush up on some of our combined arms live fire training. Uh, command and Control of live, fi uh, live fire combined arms training had, had atrophied a little bit naturally as a function of stability operations. Uh, Steel Knight was a, a pretty good uh, wake-up call to us. So we needed a renewed emphasis on, on what we're doing out here. So um, what we did is we spent about five months planning, preparing. Division staff did a great job of uh, setting out a plan of action and milestones for us to prepare to come out here. We did a combined arms staff trainer. We did a rehearsal of concept. And before that, we did all the planning conferences and uh, preparations to come out here. Um, the Marines of 5th Marine Regiment have done an incredible job, and we put them under a, a tremendous strain to move this entire command post out here to command and control uh, these multiple agencies, uh, multiple units underneath 5th Marine Regiment, and uh, I'm just so proud to have served with them. So. All right, sir. Uh, first off, can you tell me your full name, rank, and your billet, sir? Yeah, Major uh, Scott A. Garris. I'm the operations officer for 5th Marine Regiment. All right, sir. And uh, what's your hometown, sir? Hometown is uh, Kutztown, Pennsylvania. So, first question, what is the role of 5th Marines in exercise Desert Scimitar? 5th Marines' role in uh, Desert Scimitar, we are one of the uh, two regimental combat teams that are participating in this exercise. Uh, Desert Scimitar is a division level exercise in order to exercise the division's command and control. Uh, we are all out here as uh, the training aid for division. Uh, so we have small uh, training cells, not the entire units out here from 5th Marines in order to tra uh, train on command and control. So could you explain the importance, I know that you guys are mostly focusing on command and control here, sir, over your, um, over your subordinate units, what is the importance of command and control to the regiment? Uh, the importance of command and control as the regiment we are the ones that control those battalions' movements. Uh, so it's, it's key to have the command and control systems, both uh, data and voice, in order to control those movements uh, on their actions, on seizing objectives, on maneuvering through the battle space, and also reporting those uh, movements and coordinations to hire to division. All right, sir. And which uh, subordinates unit units do you guys have out here? Uh, for 5th Marines, we have uh, 2nd Battalion 5th Marines, uh, who is organic to us, and we also have 1st Battalion 7th Marines. Uh, those are both organic uh, for 5th Marines, and then we have also had 1st Tanks, which was in a direct support role, uh, and they just detached from us. We also have CLB-5 in a direct support role. Um, and then for indirect fire capabilities, we have a uh, fire support coordination center here within 5th Marine Regiment, uh, and they are actual liaison officers from 2nd Battalion, 11th Marines, who is our DS um, firing battalion from 11th Marines. All right, sir. And, you know, as we move away from counterinsurgency operations, as far as our training as Marines, why is, why is an exercise like Desert Sympathar important for us? Uh, the Marine Corps for the past 10 years has been in that uh, counterinsurgency fight. Uh, we have gotten away from being expeditionary in our uh, command and control. 
We've become reliant on uh, stationary positions, uh, robust data communications, uh, heavy on Intel analysts and, and the Intel uh, analyzation piece uh, because that is key in counterinsurgency warfare. In the kinetic fight, we have to be expeditionary. We have to be able to get up and move quickly and still maintain that command and control. Um, so for the past 10 years, we've gotten away from that. These exercises, Desert Scimitar, Steel Knight, the two major division exercises, will get the Marine Corps back to uh, its roots in being expeditionary uh, for that future fight. And could you just talk a little bit about how different it was training for counterinsurgency operations versus uh, traditional warfare? Uh, in the command and control realm, uh, the difference in counterinsurgency and the what we're fighting for now here with Desert Scimitar and the major exercises that we're planning is in a, a counterinsurgency fight, uh, the tempo is, is very slow. Uh, we need robust communications in order to do uh, what I talked about before, which is that intel analysts, uh, or analyzing all the, uh, the data that comes in. For the kinetic fight, uh, not as reliant on all those systems uh, being able to pick up and move. What are we, with with a more kinetic fight, more linear fight, what, what are the troops more reliant on as opposed to? Yeah, right now uh, we're starting to rely more on voice communications. Uh, we're actually going to displace here uh, from the main COC, which has data communications, uh, and we're going to push out on a uh, jump, which is a smaller uh, command and control node that will go forward and control the fight and will rely totally on voice communications uh, and not data communications. So having having a smaller, I guess like uh, a mobile jump COC, is that something that during a linear fight that we're more reliant on? We're absolutely more reliant on the, the voice communications and the, be able, the ability to be more mobile across the battle space and still maintain that command and control. Uh, in the coin fight, we train for static positions uh, and we could reach out with our data communications to those units without having to move any type of small mobile uh, command post. All right, sir. And last question, sir. How have your Marines performed during the Centaurs? Uh, the Marines from uh, 5th Marines and the battalions that have been attached to us uh, have performed uh, very well, uh, considering we haven't done these types of exercises, uh, focusing on the kinetic fight over about the past 10 years. Uh, come in, we've developed our standard operating procedures. Uh, the Marines have assumed those roles that they did 10 years ago. Um, so it's been uh, very effective and great training.